Hi everyone, my name is Carmen from New Leaf Designs and this is going to be, it's not my first, but it's going to be an unboxing video and I always think those are very exciting. So, without further ado, this is what I'm going to be unboxing. Wimpy the Wool Wizard. Yes. And I even got a little separate box that's a little bit smaller, so I'm really excited to see what's in there. Wimpy the Wool Wizard is a, a product by Fouquier Fleur. So you probably know by now that I'm super obsessed with knitting and basically all things yarn. Um, and I love mending stuff. I love to extend the life of a garment or of a pair of socks and Wimpy the Wool Wizard is all about that. So, and they also gave me a poster, so... <laughs> Ta-da! I love it! Um, it says on the top, make your woolens last a lifetime with Wimpy! Uh, it says wool on here, laundry for dummies, takes takes in snags in seconds, and here you have wimpy, care and repair, uh, one a dry felt, needle holder, the base for needle repairs, brush and felting base, may, oh, oh! Care and repair made easy. Okay, I had to zoom out a little bit. Um, fill your holes with felt. Remove pill and full. Uh, <laughs> I thought it said full as in the verb to full something. That means to felt something. But it says remove pill and fuzz. And you can see that he's kind of shaving the sweater, shaving all of the fuzzy bits off. Wimpy is a wool wizard and he brings you the tools, supplies and tutorials to master the magic of wool repair too. A product by Fouquet Fleur. Poster designed by Lorraine Meyer. Fouquet Fleur. Um, she has lots of great products. Um, she has lots of like zero waste-ish items um, such as the bubble buddy which is you know a tray for soap but I digress so the wool wizard wimpy the wool wizard so um, on the box it has wimpy and then here it says includes dummy proof video tutorials and I assume you can scan the um, QR code for the actual um, tutorial videos and then on the back it says what's included welcome to my wool care and repair workshop uh, we have a mending macaron darning base for socks and jumpers so that's kind of like a darning tote stool uh yeah we'll we'll see it later a pill comb removes lint and fuzzy bubbles with ease a wool brush fuzz remover and felting base um some darning yarn some felting wool um and it also says where the yarn or wool comes from uh, a needle holder felting needle darning needle and a snag needle hmm interested to see what that is okay so let's open wimpy's manual how to mend your woolens <laughs> so it's all in english so you don't have to worry about it being all in dutch and oh it actually folds out Ta-da! Laundry instructions, Wimpy's manual. <laughs> it says darn it and fuzz off. And uh, wool brush, dry felting, Swiss replica darning. So it has all these kinds of instructions. And <laughs> it says, honey, I shrunk your jumper. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, the one thing Wimpy cannot repair is shrinkage. So and then it gives some instructions on how to properly wash your your garments. Um, so you can watch the free video tutorials on fukifleur.com slash wimpy. And um, I'll be sure to link that below as well. So you can just have a little look. And then let's see what's in it. Oh, this is so cute. So cute. So we have the, the mending macaron here, the felting base and kind of the fuzz brush, some darning yarn. And this was by Shoppel, uh, Shoppel Wolle. And Shoppel Wolle, um, I think that's a sock yarn. So yeah, so that's really good yarn to, um, any sock yarn is really good yarn to darn, to repair your woolens with. Uh, the Something fell off of the skewer, so we'll just put it on top. This is some felting wool. Yeah, some wool for felting, and then, okay, this is the fuzz comb, or the pill comb, and then in here, there are some needles in here, and I think I can, yeah, take this out, and here we have a little felting needle with a wooden base, so let me show that to you. Uh, you won't be able to see it properly because a felting needle, um, it has little, or is this the snag needle? No, this is the felting needle. A felting needle has little rough bits on, on the tip of the needle uh, so that you can felt your woolens with it. And then in here is, oh, I've never seen this before, a snag needle. Cool. Uh, and, and then a darning needle, which is, you know, your, your typical large eye darning needle. What is the snag needle? Look at that. Wait. Can you see all those markings on it. So there's no eye, but there is a sharp tip. So I really wonder what that is. But we'll, yeah, let's take a look at that first because I'm just really interested. And um, one piece will manual. Let's see, fix your snags. Repair a snag in knitted or woven fabric with a snag repair needle. Before starting, massage the fabric gently in all directions. Okay, yeah. This allows the thread to go back into place as much as possible. Oh, okay, so this is really if you've snagged um, perhaps your, your shawl or scarf on something and you see that the fabric kind of wrinkles together and then you want to kind of like pull the fabric gently in all directions. This allows the thread to go back into place as much as possible. Continue until the fabric around the snag looks normal. Pick up the snag repair needle. Stick the pointy end into the fabric as close to the snag as possible. Slowly push the needle through until the rough part of the needle approaches the fabric. Spin the needle around to pick up the snag with grip texture, then push the needle all the way through and take the snag along. I'll have to try that sometime. Um, let go of the snag and, uh, on the other side. Massage the fabric a little bit more until no trace of the snag is left. Okay, that's going to be super interesting. Um, yeah, I'll have to wait until I have a proper snag on on a piece of fabric uh, in order for me to show you, but that is super interesting. Um, and then let's take a look at the felting. So maybe you've needle felted before, but you can really easily felt a fabric. Okay, it tends to come off of the, bot of the bottom here and then can't get it back on there. 
Um, so whenever you have a hole in wool fabric, it can also be a different type of fabric. And then you can felt over the hole with some of this. And I think I have some here, but I don't know if I can show you right now. Um, but you basically lay the item on top of the felting base. Um, if you have really thick, like, like a sponge or a felting mat, then you can also use that. So lay the fabric on there, take off a bit of this felting wool, put it on there, and then you go through all layers and, a, and the snags in this needle will kind of blend them together. And if you have a wool fabric, then this wool felt will attach to your fabric. If you don't have a wool fabric, but for example, a cotton fabric, then you can put a layer of wool on like underneath and on top so that the wool felt to each other. Um, because it won't felt to the cotton because it's a plant-based fiber. Um, and, oh yeah, and the melt, the, I want to say melting macaron, but the mending macaron, it has an elastic base here, and you can of course say I wanted to mend this, and then you can put the elastic around the mending macaron. This is really handy actually, and I think it will also fit into a sock. Uh, and then you can do some Swiss darning on here and you have a really sturdy base. And this is especially handy because then with your needle, you don't stab through the other side. Say, say this was a sock and then it would keep you from kind of like sewing the different sides of the sock together. Um, so yeah, that is really handy. I've never had one of these before. I just used a like cardboard tube, <laughs> like the ones you get from like kitchen roll or something. I just used that, but now I have a proper thing, a proper mending macaron. Um, and let's actually take some of the items that I want to mend and see if we can apply some of these techniques to that. All right, so I have a pair of scrappy socks here that I knit for my boyfriend. He's very knit worthy um, and he wears the couple of pairs that I've knit him. He wears it all the time. Um, so he also gets a lot of holes in them, which I absolutely don't mind. I love that, you know, the people who I gift items to, I, I love it when they come back to me with, oh, there's a hole in it. I'm so sorry, but I'm like, I love this because it, because it means that you actually wear the item a lot. So in this one, there's a bit of a larger hole in there. Oh, two! I think I think I must have thrown this in the wash and got caught on something because there's one here and then one here and the other one just has a little hole here. So I want to felt this one. So I'm gonna, there, this is really smart. There's this smaller elastic on the big elastic so that you don't have to, you know, so that's easier to get this big elastic off. That's really smart. So I'm going to place this under the hole, so that the hole is in the middle of the macaron. And then I can, I think I'm gonna use the green because it matches really well. This looks like one of those Japanese treats. I think it's called dango, but yeah. It just made me think of that. Um, so, I'm going to take some... Oh, no, wait! I put it on the wrong one. I should have put it on the felting base. Right. 
<laughs> I've never done needle felting on a sock before and I think it's going to be much easier. So I'll just take a bit of this because you don't need a whole lot. And I'm going to kind of roll it like, like a meatball so it gets a little bit smaller. And I'm going to put it on there. It's kind of a good match, actually, color-wise. So I'm going to put it on the hole and then needle felt it. So uh, the key to needle felting is that uh, you need to be really careful with the needle because it breaks very easily. And the key to that is that when you stab... Oh, <laughs> it wasn't... Um, I thought this was a needle holder, but I don't think it is. So that you, when you stab the needle in, you come out the same angle. So not that you stab and then kind of, you know. So first I'm doing a couple of gentle stabs, gentle stabs. Um, let's see if I can show you better. already looks very nice. Uh, with felting you also want to go in diagonally a couple times so that yeah it kind of attaches in different directions but you know doing that make sure that you're not damaging the needle. I think that is what I would change about this mending kit is that I would add more felting needles because um, I'm not a felting beginner anymore. Um, I mean, yeah, I felted a couple projects um, and I think with my first project I broke two or three needles. Um, so yeah, I um, and it's, it's very common to break these things. Uh, and they don't cost much at all, so um, I think that is the only thing I would change because, yeah, there is basically everything in here that you need. Oh, this is so cute. I could make like shapes and patterns on this. Yeah, the problem I usually have with felting is because uh, my felting base is kind of like a sponge and that uh, with a couple of, you know, after a while, it would felt to the sponge. Uh, and since this is a brush, I don't actually think it will felt to the brush, but... Oh yeah, it comes off really, really easily. So, let's take a look. And at the inside... You can see it's a little bit fuzzy. Yeah, this is much quicker and more fun than Swiss darning. Even though, you know, Swiss darning looks prettier. But, um, yeah. So, uh, when you're felting, the surface will look prettier than the inside because the surface, it will look kind of um, very neat and very flat. But the inside will look a bit fuzzy and you can feel, see there, it's like thicker on the inside. With a sock, this doesn't matter, but if you were felting something else, then you might also want to like felt from the other side. So you might want to like turn it around and felt a bit in this way as well. Um, 
yeah, for example, if it was a scarf or a blanket, that you might want both sides to be, you know, pretty enough. So that is a very successful and a very quick mend, and I might actually also do some Swiss, um, some needle felting on the other sock as well. Now, actually, let's see what's in the other box. Um, oh, it says Wimpy Refill. Okay, let's see. Oh! Oh my goodness. Oh! Okay, I love this. So you have a refill of uh, a lot of the needle felting colors. I love this. You could, you could repair like a whole rainbow. It's oh. so here I could pick a red that maybe matches. Not quite. Maybe the pink here is a better match. But I'm actually interested to also do some Swiss darning because, yeah, this is a bit of a larger hole. Um, and this one as well. So, yeah, and I do have some other socks. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, look at this one. Well, first of all, it's like... Even even his store bought socks, he wears them to death. I, I I might actually skip mending this and just throw it out because <laughs> how did he even wear these? Because these are cotton, so yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna want to mend these because. <laughs> They also just have lots of snags. Oh, they have lots of snags. Okay, let's see. <laughs> I'm getting excited about snags. Let's see. Okay, so yeah. So there are lots of these little loops here. Can you see this one? Yeah, okay. So, what they want us to do, this is actually some of the elastic, so I'm not sure if it's going to work, but, um, so you want to put it through the hole, and then when you reach the snag, you want to twist the rough bit of the needle and take it through. Now, it's, it's not working on the elastic, I think now and you know it's it's a way different fabric so oh, there's snags everywhere I'm gonna throw this out like I repair a lot of stuff a lot but this yeah I don't know okay still have to um, Try this one out sometime. Let's see. Right, we have a fuzz comb. Do I have? I bet I have something that I can comb the. Right, so I have a pair of socks that I've spun. I've spun the yarn and then I've knitted myself and I wear it a lot so you can see lots of fuzzy bits on there. And we're gonna clean up one sock with the pill comb and the other with the fuzz brush. So uh, let's see how the manual tells us to do that. Okay, fuzz off. Wearing woolens will often cause small fibers to come loose. These little hairballs then stick to the garment. You call them pilling, yeah, yeah. Lay your garment down on a flat but soft surface and use light pressure to work the comb from top to bottom. Work out an orderly routine to cover all surfaces. It's best to use the pilling comb right before washing the garment. 
uh, the laundry process will close up the open fibers. Oh! Pilling typically happens to newer garments with lots of loose fibers. Over the years, you'll note that the more the more spare fibers have been removed, the fewer fuzz occurs. Okay, so I'm just going to use my hand as the firm but soft surface and then use the pill comb. It kind of feels like the teeth of a zipper, sort of. So let's see. So, they're <laughs> getting up my nose. It is working. It's not as easy on my hand. Yeah, okay, let's zoom in. So, I've done this part. And then here, all of the fuzzy bits have kind of been combed down to about here. <laughs> They're stuck in my nose. Can you see? That works really well. Right, now let's try the wool brush. For the fancy pants among us, suits, skirts, dresses, and coats in woven wool or cashmere can gain a lot from a good brush. Brushing removes dust, dirt, and hair, but also delays the need for a wash. Uh, oh, okay. To keep them prist pristine, suits should ideally be brushed after everywhere. Lay the garment on a flat surface, brush against the lie of the material. I'm going to need to check the tutorial video for that. Uh, do so gently. A firm sweep is good. No, a firm sweep is good. No pressure is needed. Then brush with, with the lie to finish the look. I think that's kind of like the direction of the stitches, perhaps. If you want to ref refresh your garment or want to remove the stain, you can dampen the brush before use. Oh, that's so clever. Okay, so my sock is not the best test object for this one then. And yeah, and also I should probably do it against something else than my hand. But yeah, uh, you know, wool, you don't need to wash it as often, but you know, especially for socks, <laughs> I got a lot of hair on my socks just because, you know, from walking around the house. Okay. So it doesn't really remove the pills, but it removes the hair and dirty bits. <laughs> okay. So I think ideally you should combine the pill comb. No, first the brush and then the pill comb. You don't even need the brush for socks, actually. Because the, the fuzz and uh, the fuzz brush doesn't remove any of the pills. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Okay, so I'll be doing some darn some Swiss darning Oh, there's still lots of fuzz <laughs> around my nose. Um, oh, that's cute. In between the the yarn, it says wear, care, tear, repair. I love that. Obviously, this is not a lot of darning yarn, but, um, you know, you don't need much to darn up a hole. And after that, you know, you can, you can use some of your sock yarn. Uh, I bet you have lots of scraps if you're a knitter so you can use that but it's really pretty and yeah it kind of matches the, the colors of the felt so yeah this is really really great um right so 
this was my unboxing and um, little review of Wimpy the Wool Wizard. I absolutely love it. I will leave a link to Fuki's website down below where you can order a Wimpy for yourself. And I think she also has some stockists. Um, if you know, if you're not in the Netherlands, then perhaps check out her stockists. See if there's one in your country. And I am doing a giveaway for one of these on my Instagram. So do check out my Instagram. Um, I will I will post a link down below. Um, it will not be up yet, I don't think, when this video goes up, but. You'll see it. You'll see it soon. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to care and repair whatever you have. Remember, the most sustainable thing is, are things that you already own. Um, yeah, so make sure they last a long time. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.